No. No. <laughs> no, it's not even close to me, and it's, it's got a crisp on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice that. <laughs> Right, we're going to look at the 21700 battery PCB today. I'm going to take you through building the box, installing the cells, checking the cells, doing the PCB. We're going to try and put up some categories so that people who have ordered a full board won't have to do the building steps so they can skip along to battery check-in, battery installation and go from there. For this, you're going to need, obviously, the box. It's a M3 by 20 for the top, M3 by 10 for the bottom, and the M3 by 65 mil hex spacers. To assemble, we're gonna want a T10 Torx bit and a six mil spanner. I'm gonna be putting just about that much Loctite. Poke it through the bottom. And then you can hold it with a Torx driver on the back and just spin the hex spacer on. Now these hex spacers, I don't know if anyone can show you, um, there's got points on them. These points need to run in a straight line up and down. So as I tighten up, I'm going to make sure I line the spanner with one of those points so I can easily see if it's straight. So we're going to quickly repeat that 24 more times and then we'll go to the next step. <laughs> What, what tunes are you going to put to this? Like an absolute wobbler. <laughs> Captain Tape or Captain Tape. That's what um, you need to go over the screws. You've probably seen it before. It's, it's usually used on like DIY packs or any, anything you want to insulate. You want to give it a few lines over those holes. You probably see on the GoPro. So you've mounted to the deck, screws in, tape over the holes, and then we're ready to go on to the next step of uh, building this. Now we're going to start the PCB battery part section. I'm going to start by putting some gloves on. We don't want to get any grease or any marks. Um, on the bottom PCB, we're also going to give it a clean with some isopropanol alcohol and a lymph-free cloth. So I'll talk you through the PCB, um, just a, a bit about what's on it. We've got um, two XD90 females here. You only need to connect one if you're running one HD. If you're running a four-wheel drive board, you'd use both. Or if you're running two best sixes. And then you've got your little XD30 charge port on the side here that um, links out. To the charge port on the side of this box rather than to an XD90 on the top. And then we've got USB that we can directly connect um, to the VEST tool. We've got SWD for programming the BMS on the board. Um, we've got the bridge that links the top and bottom PCB and the CAN bus. The CAN bus will allow you to go through the VEST tool when connected via Bluetooth to your VEST and see all your cells. And then this section over here is the BMS. If the cells are balancing, you will see a red light come on here. This section can get a little bit hot, up to around about 60 degrees when it's balancing the cells. So don't worry if it feels a little bit warm. Okay, so we're gonna start by cleaning the board. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of IPA on. And I'm gonna give the rivets a good scrub and just make sure we haven't got any residue on those that could give us a bad connection. Just make sure you get everyone. And then we'll bring in our base. And hopefully this will line up. You don't want to put too much pressure on the board. You don't want it to go in at an angle. If you can help it, just press it down gently and nice and evenly. You'll start to feel a little bit more resistance when you get to the bottom. If the board's not flat, you could end up with um, Bad connection again to each cell or to a cell in this group. 
All right. So we've got the ball on. You can see I have my hands all over that then. This is why we put the gloves on, um, just so we don't have to clean. The, the further we get along with the process, the harder it is to sort of clean the bottom PCB as we go. And I've forgotten the measurements. Amy, help me out here. Is it 10 mil? 10 mil at the bottom? So I'm going to cut five 10 mil strips, one for each corner, one for the middle. What this is going to do is just support the um, first cell spacer. That was a very crude 10 mil. But never mind. It's just it's just to stop the cell spacer slipping down to the bottom. Obviously, you don't have to be that accurate. It is shrink wrap. It will squash down. So if you're wearing rubber gloves, you can get these on really easily. They grip the heat shrink really well. Don't need to put any lubrication. Okay, put those in. Let's reach for our first cell spacer. You can be a bit more forceful with this one. Just get her on. Okay, we're getting about there now. I'm just gonna have a look and make sure it's about level. I mean, it doesn't really take much time. What was that? Like 30 seconds, we're gonna have to get it on. <laughs> so I think on this one, um, we need 40 mil. Well, it says 41 in the manual, but you know, it's up to you whether you wanna be like that or not. <laughs> and five. Cool. So we're done with the shrink tube. Just going to repeat what we did before and get each of those in one corner. Going swimmingly so far, no hiccups, no problems. Unusual when me and Eamon get together to <laughs> shoot a video, but this time it's been great. Right, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And put on the top PCB. We haven't got to push this one as far down, so it sh shouldn't be as much of a problem as the lower one. Now we're ready to put the cells in. Um, you need 84 of these for the pack. If we ever order enough for one pack for testing, we always order 86. Make sure you get a couple. You might as well do it when you're ordering. They're useful cells. It can be used in a lot of lights and stuff like that. So it's worth having a couple knocking around. One thing to do with these, as the same as in Eamon's video, is get your multimeter out. You want to check each cell, try and pair up ones that are close together and put those in the same group if they do differ at all, just to give the uh, pack the best chance to balance it quickly and easily. I've already checked these and lined these up, so I'm just going to crack on with building the pack. You, should I show them? Just one cell? <laughs> Yeah, just so just, one, just so. for video purposes. So. Button tops, obviously the positive, flat top, sorry. And then the flat base is the negative. So we'll just hold that on there, hold that up there. And we can see it's at 3.444 volts. So you want to group them as close as you can to each other. If I had another one the same value or roundabout, say 443 or something like that, I would put that in the same group with that and I'd line them up in their groups and then I'd start loading them in, cleaning as I go with each cell. I've already checked these and organized them so we're just going to crack on with cleaning and building. Uh, one thing I like to have in front of me when I do it personally is the top PCB has all the layout so if you lay it down in front of you with the top facing upwards. So that would sit on like that. It's actually got all the cell groups there. So align it at the same orientation. Um, and this is your reference point. So I'm actually gonna spin it the other way around and spin that in the same orientation. And you should be able to see on the GoPro, we've got group one here, that's easily marked. Group two, three, four, five, and it goes round like this, follows a logic path, even though it looks a bit chaotic because of the 7P layout. So um, I'm going to actually squirt the cloth, not the battery, um, and I'll just keep that saturated with IPA throughout and I'll just keep picking that up and using it as I go. Starting with group one, what I'll do is I'll do group one, I'll make sure all the orientation looks good for that, then I'll move on to the next group. 
same, make sure the polarity, the orientation is correct, move on to the next group. You do that, and then you'll be confident when you put that PCB on, you've got everything right. Got that oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks. You're a little, you're little early. Look how fucking money I am, though. Like, what, just from getting that cable? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> like We've built the pack. I just try and tilt her up there for ya. So what we're going to do now, before we move any closer, is we're going to inspect the top. We're going to make sure it's clean. So I'm just going to go group by group. Um, hold this with me, um, and we're just going to visualise where we're starting. So we've got group one here. That's this four here. So you've got three, two up there, two up there makes seven. So that group's okay. Four at the top, two and one there. Again, seven. This one's a bit easier to spot, seven there. Same with group four. Group five sits along the top there. It's very similar to um, group two. Then we've got group six down here. So we've got seven cells. Um, group seven, easy to spot again. Group eight, easy to spot. Group nine here, again, easy to spot. Group 10 kind of merges with some of the negatives from um, group four. So we're just gonna check that carefully. And we've got all seven there. Now I'll move to group 11. Again, that's mixed with a load of other positives. So we'll start in this corner from group 10. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then one there. That belongs to group one, that belongs to group three. And then the final bit, we're just gonna check um, group 12 and we've got all the cells lined up there. So that's perfect. Have a glance over the top. We've used gloves, so chances are there's gonna be no um, marks on there and we have wiped each cell top and bottom as we put them in so the last thing to do is give this a wipe <clears throat> and then we're going to bring in the top part and we're going to sit this in the top part and then put it onto the top of the battery so we'll put that in there it will like sit into grooves for the back sides of the rivet. So you know when you've got it incorrectly, it won't, you won't be able to push the PCB side to side um, while it's sat on the glass fiber panel, if it's seated correctly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over, get it right in the right orientation. Oh, just before, if anyone wants to come in, this is uh, another one of the differences to the 18650 pack. So the top PCB has more on it. So we've actually got an NRF up here. Um, ignore the um, black marks. We had to do a bit of a reflow on that one. Um, uh, so what you've got is you've got NRF here. This connects to um, one of the vests, whether you're in a vest six or a vest KHD. Um, you've also got a switch pass through. So the switch will actually come from the side next to the charge port here. It will pass through, uh, connect to this connector, and then it will pass through the PCB to the NRF uh, lead and it'll go down to the VESC. Here we've just got a SWD for programming, the NRF, and then we've got the bridge connection again. So that connects top and bottom for balancing. So it's pretty simple, just a little bit different. The nice thing about this is you've got the charge port built in to the side of the PCB. So all we're gonna do is connect that little cable to the XT30 female on the bottom, and that's gonna link everything up. And then all you do is you just plug into the side of it. The new chargers that have an XT30 connection on, so it will just fit on straight away. So that's the differences between the top and bottom PCB, between the 27 and the uh, 18650. Um, on the 18650, there's not a lot going on. I believe you've only got this bridge connection and that's it. And then obviously the fuses for the soles. So I'm gonna make sure that's seated. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down over the top of the battery and make sure we're lined up with some holes. And that looks good to me. So I'll seat her on. You've got a little bit of movement, but you don't want it to go over the soles. You can also just have a little check on the side and make sure we see you properly. Then I'll get 
a couple of screws. I'm not going to lock tight them yet. I just want to get everything seated. And a few screws in. What I'll tend to do is go around and put one in each corner and then we can just start loading them in. Right, so I've pretty much got every screw in. The reason why I'm getting every screw in and then uh, making sure they're loosely tight, uh, just to keep the board flat. You don't really want one side of the board going down and the other or bowing in any way. So let's keep the pressure even as we tighten down. Yeah, it's a little bit more tedious this way, but it's the right way to do it. Really, once we're finished, these little leaves on top want to be bowed like that. Um, they put pressure on top of the back of the rivets on top of the battery. So the next thing to do, now we've got the whole pack built up, is um, we're gonna connect it to the vest. So this should, if we probe a multimeter to this, and I've done everything correctly, we should be seeing at least within 12S voltage range. So, and we've got 41.3 volts, so that's perfect. All the cells are at around about 3.4 volts. So I'm happy with that. So uh, let's clear some space and get the next bits. We've got some cables that will come with your kit. You've got the switch harness with a four pin connector. I'm gonna take these off now actually, because they're falling off. We've got the CAN bus. Um, obviously if you've got a VESC HD, the VESC are linked in between, um, but this CAN bus is for the battery pack to add that in, so you're still gonna need a CAN bus cable. The, with the VEST6s, um, there's a special one that splits um, in a Y, so you can do both VEST and plug into the canvas there. Um, on the 18650 pack, we did actually add a second canvas port so we can go in for one and out the other. <clears throat> but on this one, we'll do a Y cable, it's fine. Um, and then we've got this to power the HD. I don't want to talk too much about the HD because it's the battery pack, so we're just going to hook it up and I'll just use it as a reference point to show you where are you connecting your stuff? Obviously this will be on the panel if you've got your board or if you've ordered it separately, you will have to hook all this stuff up. So we've got the power adapter there. <clears throat> that just bridges these two to one XT90 and then that'll connect to the VESC with the cable that Sonny ever so kindly brought in for me. Um, so the first thing to do is, these are actually labeled VESC1 and VESC2. We're gonna plug the canvas cable into VESC2 and then we're gonna plug in the adapter plate. You want to make sure it comes this side of the XT90 and when it's inserted you just want to make sure it's not poking out the back it can't get trapped by the box or anything because there's going to be a panel that comes um, on the back there. So once that's all in you've got your NRF cable that goes in here. The NRF and everything is already flashed. And then that will plug into the bottom here. This also passes through the switch, like I mentioned before. So it will turn the device on and off. And obviously, like I say, you'll have this little panel. I'm just gonna lay it on the desk because it's easier. Switch, we'll take it out of the harness for now. The opposite side here. So it's nice and easy. It keeps the cables really clean inside. There's nothing in there that we don't need. There's no loose cables for the sake of it. And then the final thing I want to do is plug in the balance lead. And then as that plugged in, it will have a little bit of slack in there, that's fine. And then obviously make sure your can's connected so we can check the pack. So there's two ways to check the pack. If you've got a VESC, you'll be doing it this way. If you've got, um, if you haven't got one of our VESCs and you can't connect to canvas and you're having this as a standalone pack for whatever reason, you can connect to the USB and um, look at the cells that way. Although the NRF is built on this board, it does require the VESC to power it. It's not powered from this pack. <clears throat> 
Um, so you can't just connect to that and then see the BMS. Obviously, the NRF on there is sat on there because it can be, and it saves having a loose chip in the box. So that's why that's there. And then the last thing here, we're going to plug in the charge port. You can let's move these out of the way. You can see that going in there. They only go in one way, so you can't get it wrong. And then you've got your charge port on the side. That's also where the switch will sit, like that, when we've got the side on it. And then last but not least, <coughs> we plug in the power cable. So the way to do this is these aren't anti-spark on the board. So you always make sure you plug in this side first. And then I'm going to plug the switch back in just so I've got a bit of power control with the VESC. So that's powering off. Camera, camera ran out of battery, didn't it? So we switched it out. Uh, and last thing, this is anti-spark. So obviously we won't get any pops or anything like that when we plug this in. This will be stood up like this. Um, I'm just going to lay it down flat. So the VESC in, it's on. Just trying to figure out a good way to lean this. <laughs> Probably should have just fitted it to a panel. See the switch is off, we power it on. We've got power to the VESC. I can see from the top, you'll be able to see that we've got power to each of those. So now we can do the final bit. Which is clear the shit and just get our tablet out and just check what we're seeing with the cells. And what I'm gonna do is just tell you what to look for with the first charge, first discharge, things to watch out for if you've got a bad connection. Cause it might not be obvious, if there's one cell missing in a group, um, then that group will charge quicker and discharge quicker than the rest. But when you plug it in and just check that cells are level, it, it will all be level because the majority of that group is um, connected and all at that voltage. So don't be fooled by it looking all level. You've got to watch it when it charges and you've got to look at it after a discharge and see that a cell hasn't dropped way lower than the others. So we're going to open the best tool, make sure your Bluetooth on on the device. You can see built in there, um, that's this chip here. So you don't actually need to go into the cam forward in and activate it. Um, I was just checking it was there, so we can see it, that's good. Now, staying in the master VESC that you connect to, you can go over to the BMS, and it will show you all the cell voltages. So you can see, it's pretty even. 0 0.001 difference and that's only C12 that's that different. So again, that could be a bit of false information because the real test is how stable is the group once we charge and discharge. So like I said, you're gonna wanna <clears throat> um, watch each cell as it charges. If one overtakes a cell and that, over, that um, overtake continues to progress as you charge and there's a problem with that group, it's best to stop charging. Don't let your cells get too out of balance because you're gonna need to uh, re either discharge them or charge others up to bring those back in line um, and the same as with discharge but if you because all the cells are different so if you notice one jumps up say 0.1 and then keeps that steady it, the gap never increases then chances are that that cell's good but it's always a good idea to keep an eye on it and then i'll just run through a few more of the screens while we're in here so we've got temperature sensors on here um, T7 is missing, that's why it's minus 60, it's on the top PCB. If you want to uh, add that in yourself, and the last screen is the plot mark, but I don't think it works with that, and just shows you um, like an overview of the um, bottom PCB. Um, it shows you where all the temp sensors are. I think Eamon could probably put a screenshot somewhere of what that looks like. Uh, and that's about it. Um, you just want to check that your temperature sensors are reading correctly. T1. T2, sorry, and T3 are always usually a little bit higher, and T8, um, I think, is actually on the top PCB, and we just need to correct that temp reading with some firmware because it's got a long distance to travel. But apart from that, that looks good. So what you would do after that <coughs> is plug it into charge, keep your uh, tablet or whatever connected as you're charging, come back every now and again, check how your cells are doing, check what the levels are like, if they all look good, go out for a ride, check them again once you discharge. If everything seems good at that, um, by then it's probably gonna be fine for the future. So congratulations, you've built yourself a pack. Go fucking ride it. <laughs> <laughs>